Welcome to the Southwestern Indiana Sports Network 2022 Football Sectional Roundtable featuring Kurt Gutzel, Craig Schneider, Bob Welp, Chris Norton, and your host, Joe Milligan. Now, the Southwestern Indiana Sports Network 2022 Football Sectional Roundtable. Welcome to the Drew Mesmer Show on the Southwestern Indiana Sports Network. Join us each week as we go inside Forest Park Basketball with head coach Drew Mesmer. Now for the Drew Mesmer Show on the Southwestern Indiana Sports Network, powered by Milligan Brosmer Communications. Amazing game ever played in the universe. The pitcher is fierce. Danny Roberts is up at bat. And the crowd goes wild. He just won the game. Let's go. Yes. We protect the car you drive. Go get him, Danny. And the dreams that drive you. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. And welcome back to the Southwest Indiana Sports Network 2022 Football Sectional Roundtable. And we're joined by CC Broadcasting and WBC's uh, Kurt Gutzel. Kurt, you are also the uh, play-by-play man for for Southwest football and basketball. Yes, I am. Yep. And, uh, you know, seeing how we are a roundtable, we're going to discuss the sectionals. And the uh, first section we want to discuss is sectional number 40. Class 2A, it, the first game one is Forest Park versus North Posey. Game two, Mitchell versus Paoli. Game three is Tail Tell City versus Crawford County. And game four is Perry Central versus Modern Day. Um, um, I know you don't cover Forest Park, but uh, you, I'm sure you, you know a lot about them. Cause, so, but what can you tell us about Forest Park? Well, they're, they're a very uh, young team. They had a lot of injuries uh, throughout the course of the season. Uh, new coach in Terry Riggs, he's done a really good job at keeping them on task and battling through all those injuries. They uh, were in several games uh, throughout the season. They've had some turnover problems. They fumbled the football a lot. And uh, it's just they just didn't snake bit. They won their opening game against Princeton, but have not won since. So um, it, it's been a trying time for Coach Riggs and his team, but uh, they still practice and they still play hard. So um, hopefully they can uh, put together a good game against North Posey. And I think what, what uh, you know, Coach Riggs is trying to do is also trying to, to, to do Trish. And I know last, the, the last football game they had all the football alumni back, and I think he's just trying to get to, get everything going over at Forest Park. Yeah, they, they, they had a really good start to their uh, football uh, tradition. Usually it's the other way around. You struggle for a while when you start a new program, uh, you know, back in the day. But they did it right through their F. PNF Football League, Eric Ubelor put that together, and they didn't, they didn't try to sprint before they crawled, and they, they built up a, a good uh, uh, few years uh, under Terry Wagner and had a lot of – they had more college players uh, than the Dubois, the other Dubois County schools combined. When you're talking about Grant Welp, an All-American quarterback at Franklin, and Nathan Jones at Marion, and, uh, of course, Ben Broniker and all those guys. And uh, that's because they built it step by step back in the day. So uh, they do have some good tradition. And Coach Terry Wagner did a great job of starting that, and along with Eric and that crew. But um, they're just trying to find some footing, and it's it, it's just so hard in the PAC um, to get footing if you're not a traditional team. Because there's there's several of these teams that have been playing football for a hundred years in that league that haven't made headways. And uh, Forest Park is, you know, right there on the a cusp of getting some things going in a positive manner because of young players. And, and I think Coach Riggs is going to do a really good job of moving this thing forward. And, you know, then, then you got the marksman playing Crawford County and, uh, and Coach Webb. And, and I know they've had a tough time, but I know they're also trying to build tradition there too. Yeah, Coach Webb's done a really good job with this South City team. They've been in several games as well. Uh, they play hard-nosed football, and um, they line up, and 
Utah City's always got that great tradition behind them. So, yeah, they're, they're going to have a nice program, too, in the years to come. And, you know, and then what I consider two of the best teams in this sectional, Perry Central, the running team, versus modern day, the passing team. Yeah, Perry's under Coach Greg Gibson, uh, very good, very solid again uh, this year. But modern day, they, they've been really good forever, and they've, they've just been – uh, a really good tournament team down through the years. And, you know, sometimes the, the SIAC and the greatness, which is the SIAC of the perceived greatness, sometimes is a little bit overblown. But in their case, I think uh, them playing those bigger teams, I think that helps uh, down through the years. So I, I, I think they're pretty good too. And, you know, I, I got to see Modern Day play once this year. And the one thing that that uh, made me uh, impressed me about Wonder Lake was he gets the ball so fast I don't even know if he can sack him. Yeah, he's he's been there for a while, and uh, Coach Gable they do a good job with their quarterbacks, and uh, he's an athletic type of guy. He can, he can get around the pocket a little bit if he has to, but you're right, he, he does unload that thing in a hurry and kind of negate the pass rush. Now in uh, Class 4A, Sectional 24. We've got a lot of signed teams sandwiched with Boonville. Uh, in game one, we've got Modern Day versus Bossy. In game two, we've got Boonville versus Harrison. In game three, we've got Central versus Rice. And then, in, in, and then Jasper draws the bye, and they'll play the winner of the Memorial Bossy game. Uh, uh, what do you think about this draw? Well, I think Memorial uh, in that you know that first game against Bossy, Bossy struggled this year. Memorial is really good, especially later on in the season after they made the quarterback change. Um, I think they and uh, Jasper were the two favorites there. So, uh, yeah, I expect Memorial to beat Bossy. I really do. And um, and uh, who do you consider the favorite in this section? Uh, it's gonna. I think it's gonna come down to Memorial uh, in Jasper uh, whenever they uh, get together, which will be week number two. Not to say that other teams later on in the tournament in the third round. Uh, couldn't pose a problem to the Wildcats. I know Boonville's very good, and uh, but that Memorial Jasper game should be good. Jasper with this bye, and even though late in the season they were still getting guys back, it seems like they're going to be full strength more than they have been throughout the season heading into the game with Grant Young coming back and a few of those other guys being able to play last week. So uh, I think a bye was good for the Wildcats. And Tony Lewis hasn't had too many of those. Uh, hey. His coaching career, as he told me. And, you know, in, and then in Class 3A, Section 32, we've got Scottsburg versus Corridon Central. We've got Harrison versus Southridge. We've got Madison versus Heritage Hills. And we've got Charleston versus Salem. And uh, I'll tell you what, um the thing that impresses me about Southridge is they just – they I, I actually, I, I was texting with Ross Roos the other day, and I, I, I actually told him, that, and I'll tell you this, I, I, I said – um a Hall of Fame coach and a future Hall of Fame coach on defense there. Yeah, it's, they've uh, they've been great defensively. They they have attacked the other team's offense. They have not let you know the other teams dictate what they're going to do. And they've got a very good defensive line. Their linebacking core has been outstanding, and and you get some guys up front that can play, and also some linebackers can play. It frees you up your secondary to. Uh, you know, play more man coverage with the athletes that they got. And uh, it's it's been a really good uh, defensive year for Southridge. So that's 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 their big thing. And they've been able to shut down most teams uh, because of that defense. And, you know, when I was talking to Coach Wilkerson the other day, I told him, I said, I'm predicting a Southridge versus Heritage Hills sectional final. Well, that's not out of the realm of possibility because, Heritage Hills, and we all know how good a coach Coach Wilkerson is, and they get a very prideful program, and they do things the right way, and they play hard. And, you know, despite the bumps in the road uh, throughout the season, uh, you'd be a fool to not think that they are going to play well in the tournament. So uh, they've kind of made some changes a little bit in their personnel with Jet Goldsberry playing quarterback, and, uh, you know, they've got really good uh, wings with the Staples kids, and, uh, they, they're just really good, and they're going to be tough defensively. Uh, they're going to have a game if they, they, they and Charleston both win. Charleston's really, really good. They're, they're a, a legit contender as well. And uh, that, that game between Heritage Hills and Charlestown will be uh, well worth the admission.
And uh, and the, the good thing about for Heritage Hills is they also got uh, Hunter Meredith back. Yeah, he was he came back a little bit in the Southridge game. He had a little dimension. They run a lot of blast plays for him, you know, right off tackle. And those guys that they have uh, uh, up front, they're strong kids. And uh, yeah, he's he's definitely added a different dimension since he's come back as well. Well, Kurt, this week you get to stay at home, right? Yeah, I'll say Raiders play North Harrison. And that'll be live on WBDC at what time? Uh, 7 o'clock with the pregame show, 7.30 with the uh, kick. Looking forward to the game. Raiders have played North Harrison a few times. And they're a very hard-nosed team. They don't throw the ball very much. They run the ball just like Southridge wants to. But they're a little less diverse in Southridge because they usually impose their will uh, on the along the line of scrimmage. So uh, it's kind of neat to play in a different type of team. Uh, if you're, you know, a Southridge player, coach, a fan, just uh, you know, the team you don't see very often. And you've been listening to the South Wesleyan Sports Network 2022 Football Sexual Roundtable. We'll be back right after that. That's just for our sponsors. <laughs> I'm Matt Wolfer, president of the IHSAA Foundation, and we need your help. We need your help so the youth of our community can develop advanced leadership skills. We need your help giving high school administrators and coaches the instruction and insight they need to be better role models and teachers. To learn more or to make a tax-deductible contribution, go to IHSAAFoundation.org. You'll not only be contributing to the foundation of the IHSAA, you'll be contributing to the foundation of our community. It's time for the Nate Hawkins Show. Learn all about Heritage Hills basketball straight from the coach. The Nate Hawkins Show, exclusively on the Southwestern Indiana Sports Network. Southwest Indiana Sports Network's football roundtable for this season, uh, and we're joined by uh, superstars from WJTS, play-by-play man and color analyst Craig Schneider and Bob Welp. How you guys doing today? I'm doing great. How about you, Bob? Beautiful day. Can't argue. And, and you know, and and it's a week of sectional, uh, sectional so uh, you know it, it, it's it's got to be a great week. So, and we're going to go over sectionals, and the first section we'll go over is. Sectional 32, Class 3A, is uh, it includes Southridge and here to Chills. And um, in game one, in game one's it'll be Scottsburg versus Crawford County, or Court and Central. In game two, it'll be Harrison versus Southridge. In game three, it's Madison versus Heritage Chills. And in game four, will be Charlestown and Saint Salem. Not that I know much about some of those teams. I know I know I know a lot about two of those teams, Southridge and Heritage Chills, but uh, not much about the other teams. Yeah, kind of my first look at that sectional pairing there. I mean, Southridge is going to open up against North Harrison at home. Uh, they get past that, you would expect them to be able to get into the championship game because Cord and Scottsburg both are three and three, three and six records. Um, and then you got Heritage Hills and probably Charlestown. They're going to meet. It looks like in that second round. So. Um, yeah, it could just be a situation where Southridge, you would think, would be the favorite in that one. But, uh, you know, again, Heritage Hills and Charlestown, you know, they've not been too bad this year either. Yeah, when you talk about Southridge and you look at the other teams in there, Charleston to Heritage Hills does a pretty decent job of defensive flow. Jasper run, or Southridge runs those two wingbacks. And if you're not paying attention to what's going on, Southridge has shown through the course of the season – they will drop a bunch of points on you. I would really – I'm leaning towards Southridge to come out of this section. Oh, yeah, and even defensively, Bob. I mean, uh, 
gosh, they're only giving up eight points per game on average. They did give up 24 against, against Gibson Southern. <laughs> but other than that, no other team has scored more than two touchdowns on them. So, yeah, I would say Southridge would be a favorite in that one as well. And, you know, um, and my personal uh, thing, I'm a homer for, for the South Southern Sports Network. I'm, I'm hoping for a Southridge versus Heritage Shields final. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. You better believe it. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be a great game, a great uh, atmosphere, and uh, I don't really know how they'd play out as far as, you know, who would be the home team there. But regardless, whether they're playing at Honeyburg or over at Lincoln City, that'd be a great matchup. Well, I think we know that both those teams have the ability to win on the road. So it's just going to be as simple as who brings us that night. And in Class 2A, Section 40, we've got the first game, we've got Forest Park versus North Foley. Game two, we've got Mitchell versus Paoli. Game three, we've got Tell City versus Crawford County. And game four, we've got Perry Central having to take on Mr. Wonderlick and the Evansville Modern Day Wildcats. And uh, what do you guys think about Forest Park's draw on that? Uh, well, you know, again, North Posey, 7-2 and two on the season. And, uh, you know, again, it's just one of those teams where it's like North Posey, in some of their big games, they didn't fare very well. I mean, as far as their two losses, Southridge, 49 and then you had four, or the uh, Tecumseh game where they gave up 45 points and losing 45 to 29. But, you know, Forest Park gave them a battle. Uh, they played that game back on September 30th. And Forest Park, um, on the road, only lost by a touchdown, losing 28 to 20. So, you know, it's just what I think, I think North Posey is one of those teams every year. You know, they're, they're, they're good. They're competitive and all that. But, uh, you know, I, I think that's a possibility – for a potential upset. But, again, it's on the road at North Posey, and uh, Forest Park's just going to have to play the perfect game to win that one. Yeah, I think everybody can look at this, and, and we've had first-hand experience with Modern Day and Wonderlick. When Modern Day comes into this, not only do they have an outstanding quarterback who's a senior, their three top receivers and their running back are all seniors. So not only are you bringing talent, you're bringing experience. I'd really like to see Forest Park do something well in this sectional, but it, it's it's why they play the game and upset can happen. Yeah, I agree. And again, modern days, uh, you know, they had a tough battle, lost that game against Wright last Friday night, fourteen to seven. But uh, again, you're right. If if all those seniors on that team play as well as they played against Jasper when we saw them, you know, um, modern day is going to be really tough to to beat in that sectional because they always play so well during the postseason. And I'll tell you what, um, it'll be interesting to see the first round against Perry Central Modern Day because, you know, Modern Day's got a wonderful passing attack, but, you know, Perry Central was with Mr. Guillaume. Um, they've got a very good running game. Yeah. Again, that's proven with their 8-1 and record, there's no doubt. Um, so, uh, again, their only loss was against a very good Tecumseh team this year, losing that game 37-15. to But, uh, uh, again, I would have to say, you know, just based on – modern day what they face week in and week out being in the SIAC conference and down in Evansville. Um, I, I, I still think that they're going to be the favorite, but Perry Central could give them a game. Yeah, but when you look at Perry Central and you talk about the running back, Jasper's the same type of, uh, of team. Southridge really kind of falls into that category where you want to control the clock and you want to control the ball. The problem is when you're built that way, modern day and their quick strike ability, if they hit a couple of good plays, you find yourself down two possessions, you really you have to start to start to alter your your game plan and that's where teams are gonna fall into trouble. Oh yeah, and don't forget, I mean modern day has always played really good defense too. This year just getting twelve points a game. So I think really their defense has kept them in a lot of games as well. So uh but you know, again, uh Right now, everybody's record is zero and zero. So, again, anything can happen in, in the sectional tournament. So, And, you know, another Southwestern Indiana Sports Network team, team that we cover is the Tell City Marksman, and they'll be playing Crawford County in game three of the sectional, too. Yeah, I see that. Uh, Crawford County, 0-9, Tell City, 2-7. and seven, So, they've struggled a little bit this year. Uh, the wins against Pike Central and also Forest Park. But, uh, um, yeah, again, I – you would think it's just Tell City, and uh, are they at home on that one? Uh, no, actually, they're going to be on the road at Crawford County. 
But, uh, you know, they're going against a Crawford County team that's just not scored any points this year. Uh, they've, they've scored four points and give up 57 a game. You know, Spring Valley beat them 71 to nothing. So, yeah, I would, I would say that's going to be an easy win for Tell City. I would have to agree with you on that. And, you know, and, and, and going back to sectional 24, class 4A, a sectional that you guys are, are well aware of. You guys have seen every, every team that's in the sectional. In game one, you've got Evansville Memorial versus Bossy. Game two, you've got Boonville versus Harrison. In game three, you've got Evansville Central versus Evansville Rice. And then in game four, Jasper drew the bye. They'll be playing the winner of Memorial and Bossy. Uh, what do you think about Jasper's role in this? Um, I think one of the key things with this, and actually I saw an interview with Grant Young after the game where he was just talking because, again, it's great to have Grant Young back in action, and he proved that in that win over Vin Sims with two touchdown passes and one rushing. And, uh, again, just to have his leadership back on the field. Um, you know, Max Butel was outstanding in his in his relief role, basically, um, you know, helping the Wildcats on a three-game winning streak. But getting Grant Young is so important, especially once you get into the sectional tournament, because, you know, Grant led us to that big win over Memorial to start the season, 34-10. to 10. And uh, so to have him back for a potential matchup against Memorial, I think is going to be key. But the other thing, too, is having that bye, it gives you two weeks to prepare because Memorial is going to beat Bossy. I mean, let's, let's just face it, that's – both those teams play on that same field, and it's going to be, even though it says a bossy home game, it's, it's a memorial home game as well. And, uh, you know, so they're going to win that, that game, I think, fairly easily because they're playing outstanding football right now. But, uh, you know, the key thing with that bye week is, you know, you get two weeks to prepare for you're, you're going to expect memorial, so I'm sure that's what Jasper's going to work on. But also to get guys healthy and, you know, guys like Grant Young and, and others. Uh, you know, we got Jackson Bauer back on the offensive line and, uh, you know, again, just get, get everybody kind of healthy and feeling good and, and uh, just kind of catch your breath before you, you, you face Memorial in a couple of weeks. I think getting Bauer back uh, was huge. It just seemed in the Vincennes game. Now, even though Vincennes has come in with a few losses uh, into this, into the Jasper game, um, they've been in every game. Castle, you know, was a tight game. Uh, Wright had mm-hmm. to score late to win. Uh, it, it's just they played solid games, and their defense has that six five, two hundred ninety five pound uh, patent over the nose guard. Ubalar, because Bauer came back, was able to handle him more one on one, and there wasn't so much help going to the guy that was substituting for Bauer. And the other right. big key is uh, Bear. When Bear came back against Modern Day, you could tell that he wasn't a hundred percent. But I think over these last few games, going on the road, especially at North and going on the road at Castle, mm-hmm. Bear has played ex- extremely well, which allowed their defensive backs and Atkins and those guys to start playing more little one-on-one coverage. Oh, yeah, we definitely saw that against Ben Sims, too, because, you know, coming into that game, you're looking at Xander Hunt, and it's like, man, we got to keep him under control. Well, we got great pressure on him and forced him to do things that he normally is not used to doing. Uh, but, you know, we picked them off three times with, uh, uh, I think, Bear had one and also two by Mitchell Leinenbach. And, uh, you know, the thing is, when we intercept him, he also had a fumble rec- or a fumble loss on that first possession. Uh, you know, we just put so much pressure. But I think what where Jasper's doing so well, especially in the last two weeks, is that we're taking their top players out. You know, Angelo St. Louis against North only rushed for like 65 yards and basically didn't – really get into any type of groove and then just dominating Xander Hunt, against, you know, in, in the Vincennes game. And uh, so Jasper's going to have to do the same thing. But the thing is, Memorial has so many weapons that, uh, you know, you can't key just on one player. Not to mention they have Coach Hurley over there. Oh, yeah. Year in, year out, you and I are constantly discussing. Memorial may have a little bit of struggle at the beginning of the season, whether it's due to injury or what have you. But at the end of the year, those guys are always there. And Memorial, the last two games that we played, and we expected them to play last year until the upset with uh, uh, Northview took place, Memorial year in, year out, has given Jasper bits, especially when we're down there at Enloe. Uh, the last two games, Jasper's won those. They had some key injuries last year in their first game down at Enloe to where Jasper was able to win that game. But mm-hmm. And we even played back in our day, and we played Memorial. They're, they're one of the hardest-hitting teams you'll ever face. No doubt. 
And, you know, um, I, when I went to the game the other night, the Jasper Vincent's game, I, I got to see uh, Braylon's brother, uh, Easton, and he told me he, uh, Braylon's more of a, a long jumper, not much of a sprinter as, as Easton was. And after seeing Braylon run the ball a couple times, I thought, uh, I think I think Braylon, I think I want to have a, 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 a sprint between Braylon and Easton. Yeah, you know, and that's the nice thing is the Wildcats have been able to get him involved in the offense too. I mean, he's been um, just on some of those counter plays, and uh, you know, he's turned them into touchdowns. So. Um, that, that, that's another boost. You know, you talk about his defensive ability, but, yeah, there's no doubt that he brings a lot to the Wildcat offense, and uh, they're going to need every bit of that against Memorial. When we were playing Vincennes, and the game was still in question because it was early, Jasper was faced with a third and forever, and they tossed the ball out to Bear, and he made some moves that he hasn't been making all year, which leads me to believe he's 100% back. And he got us that first down. Jasper went down, we scored. And the game was just never in doubt at that point. So with him coming back, that that's huge. It also allows Kabrick, who's just what you call your utility man, he can do a little bit of everything. He punts the ball for us. He kicks the ball for us. Does what he needs to do. So I, I honestly, I know Wrights is the class, but the way Jasper's playing, I know Memorial's a different team, but I think Jasper, due to injury and guys happen to respect other positions that they're not comfortable in. I think Jasper's a different team, too. I totally agree with you because, you know, you, you take a look at the teams in the sectional. Uh, you know, you, you, you could say Rice is the favorite because they pretty well ran the table, obviously. It's not an old record and they've beaten everybody. But, you know, Memorial's riding high right now. I mean, they're playing great ball. Jasper's riding high with a four-game winning streak. Big win. And think about that. That four-game winning streak with a freshman quarterback and three of those games on the road. To pull that off is phenomenal. I mean, honestly, is it what what they uh, what is the standings? Right, second place, three way tie between Modern Day Memorial and Jasper. But uh, you know, again, you take away that hiccup against Harrison. Hey, we're second in the conference. You also, you know, bringing up that point, it's also very important to talk about Coach Lewis and what he's done this year. It's all the coaches, if you're honest with yourself, will face the problems that Coach Lewis faced throughout the course of the season. However, when it comes to Coach Lewis, it seemed like every, one, every issue was thrown at him at one time. He brought up three freshmen in Elliott Smith, Max Butel, and Ross Dawkins. You don't hear about that at Jasper. You usually hear it at schools that has, uh, just are fighting for sheer numbers to, to actually put it being out on the field. What right. Coach Lewis has done this year and making the bold decisions, the adjustments Coach Selton has made as far as Jasper is still playing man-to-man out on the receivers, but he's given some help on top. I think this coaching staff, led by Coach Lewis, has done an outstanding job this year. Yeah, there's no doubt. But, uh, you know, don't forget about Boonville, too. Boonville's 6-3 and three on the season, so, you know, they've done some pretty good things. They've got some really good athletes on their team, too. So, uh, you know, you, you look at uh, how many are two, four, six, Seven teams in the tournament, uh, four of them have had, had outstanding seasons. Plus, Harrison's playing better football, even though, you know, their record doesn't really say much about it. or three with just three wins. But, uh, you know, again, I just think it's an outstanding uh, tournament. You know, there's going to be some first-round easy wins for Memorial and Rice, I believe. But, uh, uh, you know, I think that, that game, uh, what is it, Boonville taking on Harrison, that could be an interesting one, honestly. Yeah, I think that uh, if, if Jasper can go and keep their head straight and be disciplined and get that win at Memorial, um, you know, rights, if we would face them in the championship game, if I recall correctly, that game would be at Jasper. Uh, yeah, I think you would be right. So, And, you know, yeah. um, and you know that they, people always talk about, you know, that bye week, you know, you get to rest your players, but I think that, you know, with with the injuries that Jasper's had this year, and and it's great that they're that, that they're overcoming those. It's great to have that extra week though, just to rest those guys. No question about it, because again, Grant Young, um, you know, he he looked good, but again, you just got to have that one game to kind of knock some rust off and all that. But uh, you know, just maybe some things that were bothered because he didn't play in the second half. So you know, Max Butel took over, and really he didn't miss a beat against Vincennes. But uh, but yeah. 
there's there's just some guys that just need to be taken care of and tweaked up a little bit, and uh, hopefully everybody's 100 percent by the time we get there on October 28th. Yeah, with with Grant Young playing that first half, I, I have to imagine that it was just as you said, knocking the rust off, but letting him go out and play hard that first half, pulling him out of that second. You tell you're able to do that because you tell has been playing so well, and then at the end of the game, see where where Grant Young's at, you know, are you feeling good? You know, I don't know if the game is much closer because Vincent gave a lot of gifts to Jasper if mm-hmm. Coach Lewis stretches him out. But I got to think the game plan was to put Young in the first half and then go. And, you know, I've, I've asked Coach Lewis about this last few guys because uh, you guys have both been uh, broadcasting for quite a while. Have you ever seen so many scooping scores in your life in a, one season? <laughs> Oh man, not that I remember. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we were uh, we were hurt by the one against Harrison. That was you know one of the key plays in the game there. But uh, yeah, the scooping scores. I think it's you know I I think defenses are taught to you know hey get that ball out of their hands. Let's 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 strip the football. So you know it, it's one thing to make the hit, but also I think that teams work on that a lot for these days to, uh, you know, not only make the hit, but, man, try to draw that ball loose or strip it away from them. So, you know, I think that's got a lot to do with it. I think the size and speed of the players today, especially on the lines, usually, you know, back in our day, you either had size or you had speed, Mm -hmm. the combination of those. Also, I think a lot of it, if you look at Jasper's win streak, the one thing that we've stopped doing is turning the ball over in the bunches that we have. Holdsworth has done an outstanding job of protecting the ball over the last four games. I think he's playing his best ball of the season right now, but we're not giving them really their opportunities that they had early in the season just by not protecting the ball. And so yeah. you, you put the ball down and you get these guys that are 260 pounds and they still run a four or five forty. They can get to the other end zone in a hurry. Yeah, you know, and, and one other thing too with um, you know Carter Holsworth, you know we tried to put him in the quarterback position once Grant went down and all that, but he's more comfortable in that tailback spot. And uh, yeah, there's no doubt that there's been a huge emphasis for him to protect the football. But he's also not having to carry as much of the load as what he was earlier in the season because Perkins has come on so strong and played well. You got Braylon Bear back. You know Charlie Cabrick's done some things carrying the football, but you know we'll also give it to Ross Dawkins if needed. And, and Landon Fleck can come off the bench and play well, too. So I just think the Wildcats, you know, I know we've got our two primary fullbacks that, that they alternate in there, but there's a lot of weapons with that rushing attack. And then, plus, with Grant Young back, you know, you've got a quarterback who can run the football as well now. I think it's easy to see that Holsworth, although with the experience of the season, he's gotten better, but he's also gotten better because of just what you said, Jace Perkins coming in. And mm-hmm. just doing what he's been doing, Holsworth wants to get a few more snaps. You know, these guys are young. They don't have to rest like us old guys. Yeah. They want to get a few more snaps. He's got to raise his game. So there's been different times to where Coach Lewis has been riding the hot back. And I think the the way Perkins has really raised his game has caused Holsworth to raise his game. Oh, I agree. And don't forget, you know, again, the offensive line has just been outstanding during this winning season. Uh, you know, again, Jackson Bauer back in action, but, uh, you know, Jesse Uvalor, uh, Griff Kyle, Evan Nardoff, Carson Kelly, uh, even the tight ends with uh, Will Wallace uh, getting in there and Cameron Howard. So, again, that offensive line has been solid. But, uh, you know, again, expecting to play Memorial in a couple of weeks, you're going to have to have all phases of the game on top of, it, uh, on top of things. So, uh, again, offense, defense, special teams, everybody's going to have to play well. I, I agree 100%. It, it, it can, there is no tomorrow, and these seniors have to understand that the energy they brought in the Ben Sims game, because even Coach Rollweather had told me after the game that he was surprised by the outcome because of how competitive Ben Sims has been. Mm-hmm. You have to take into this tournament the same attitude that you took into senior night and go after it. There will be no gifts with these teams. They're playing too well right now. No doubt. Well, guys, uh, we look forward to many more quality calls on WJTS this season for you guys. Same here. We got at least one more, but hopefully we got plenty more after that. So, again, in a 
going to be a fun one on October 28th. Yeah, this is one of the best sectionals around, and, and I'm excited, and I'm really looking forward to Jasper moving down the field. And you've been listening to the South Sydney Sports Network 2022 Football Sectional Roundtable, powered by Milligan Bros. for Communications. We'll be back right after these messages from our sponsors. <laughs> You've been listening to The Jeff Logan Show. Find out what is happening in Perry Central basketball each week, exclusively on the Southwest Indiana Sports Network. Wanting to scan those old videos, films, or audio to DVD? We'll look no further than Milligan Communications. We can also scan your old pictures, slides, and negatives to picture quality as well. With thousands of happy customers, let Milligan Communications help put your treasured memories on a digital media. Call Milligan Communications today at 812-630-2449. Milligan Communications, capturing your yesterdays. You dream it, we create it at Street Dreams. Custom paint, fabrication, Stereos, wheels, tires, and more. We're also your authorized Sinister Sound dealer. Street Dreams, 317-624-1000, where you expect quality and get... When you think sporting goods, think no further than All-Star Sports in Ferdinand. Custom embroidery, screen printing, team uniforms, sports equipment and sports apparel and shoes. We have it all. Give Brad a call today at 812-367-1618 or visit them in the Country Plaza Shopping Center in Ferdinand. All-Star Sports is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 7, and Saturday, 9 to 4. All-Star Sports, when you're thinking sporting goods. Welcome back to the 2002 Section Round Table here on the Southwest United Sports Network. And, and our last guest is, uh, is Chris Norton, the, the uh, sports director at, at WITZ. Chris, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. You know, uh, you know, you took over for a legend, uh, uh, Walt Ferber, but, uh, you know, uh, time for you to make a legend yourself. I hope so. That's the plan. Yeah, and I, I, I do want to thank Walt because, you know, obviously he helped a lot in the transition, and thankfully he's made it a lot smoother than I think it could have been otherwise. So very happy to be here. And uh, you know you do cover Jasper as your main team, and um, and uh, how how is went covering Jasper this year? You know it's gone really well. Um, it's kind of been the tale of two halves with the Jasper team, which I know we'll get to. Uh, but it, it's been great having Terry Gobert. He's been there a lot longer than I have, and a lot of good knowledge on his side. And uh, okay, we'll we'll start with section sectional forty forty, which is class two A. Uh, for game one is Forest Park North Posey. Game two is Mitchell versus Paoli. Game three is South City versus Crawford County, and game four is is Perry Central versus Mother Day. Um, what do you know about the Rangers this year? You know, the Rangers have had a really tough year, and I know it's Corbin Lingenfelter that's been following them a little more closely than I've been able to. Um, you know, they've had injuries. They've had a new head coach that wasn't instituted until later in the year. So they're coming in one and eight. Now, they've had a couple of games that they probably could have won, uh, Pike Central, 26-14, uh, one of those teams was Posey. 28-20 was the final score when they took them on just a couple of weeks ago. Forest Park looked to have things together on the field. Really one of those games that they probably feel pretty good about. So getting the draw, getting the Vikings in North Posey in the first round, not the worst-case scenario for them. And uh, what do you think about game number three is Tell City versus Crawford County? You know what, that is a tough one. Tell City has had a pretty good year that I think has probably flown under the radar a lot this year. You know, they gave Perry Central in a rivalry game a pretty close call. I believe 26-21 was the final on that one. Now, it was very, very early in the season. And Perry Central, one of the two strongest teams probably in the sectional 40. In the game four is Perry Central versus Modern Day. And I know you've seen Modern Day play. You've mm-hmm. seen uh, their quarterback. Their quarterback is wonderful. Wonder Lick is, is a good quarterback. Yeah, very good. Uh, you know, they were able to take down Jasper. Now, Jasper was going through some stuff, but that alone, it would have been a great game without some of the stuff they were going through. You know, you could probably say Evansville Modern Day or the field here in 2A, sectional 40, 
And that's not to discourage or, you know, put down anybody else in the class. That's just a testament to how good this Evansville modern day team truly is. And, you know, um, and, you know, the one thing I got, I got to see modern day play that day when they play Jasper. And the one thing that was impressed me about Wonder Lick is just how fast he gets the ball out. He can get the ball out fast. He can tuck it and run. He's a good decision maker. Uh, you know, they've got the Wonder Lick test in the NFL. He's a smart quarterback, smart kid here in high school. Okay, in Class 3A, Sectional 32, we've got in Game 1, we've got Scottsburg versus Crawford versus Corden Central. In Game 2, we've got North Harrison versus South Ridge. In Game 3, Madison versus Heritage Hills. In Game 4, is Charlestown versus Salem. Okay, let's go back to Game 2, uh, and North Harrison versus South Ridge. You know, North Harrison is one that's kind of off the radar for most people probably within the listening area here and in Dubois County. South Ridge, though, you know, for as strong a year as they have had, I don't think they've gotten as much probably Indiana State attention coming in with the AP number 10 seed. People forget they took Gibson Southern. It was a two-score game, yeah, but they also had three, four turnovers in that contest. Um, I know you've talked with head coach Scott Buning, Buning so have I. Um, that's a team that's focused on being the best regular football team they can be. North Harrison, 7-2 and two on the year. I mean, they're no slouch either, but the Raiders, it seems like a fairly special year. And in game three, number three in that, section, in that sectional is Madison versus Heritage Hills. And, and a team that Southridge, you know, put down fairly easily in Heritage Hills, which always figures to be a solid team once you get to the postseason. Madison consolidated, by the way, a pretty big question mark, not only, you know, how they're going to get the game off. They're two hours away. Uh, the first time – First meeting between these two sides. It seemed to have a, a pretty decent group together the first year between these two teams. We'll see how things go. I, I would probably give the edge to Heritage Hills. And, you know, what, I've talked to Coach Wilkerson and Coach Beauty, and the, the really weird thing is they're going over east, and then uh, there's, set, there's six teams in the, from the PAC in the other sectional, and they would not see any of them until a semi-state. No, which, which is kind of nice. Meeting some new teams, you've seen the same pack teams there for a while throughout the season. Getting somebody new, it's a more of, you know, the dynamic of how do we get there, how do we play when we get there, unusual environment, longest road trip of the year for one of these sides. In Class 4A, Sectional 24, we, in Game 1, we've got Memorial versus Bossy. Game 2 is Boonville versus Harrison. In Game 3 is Central versus Wrights. And in Game, game 4, which, which is a bye, a bye game, Jasper drew the bye. Jasper will play the winner of Evansville Memorial and Blue Bossy. Uh, what do you think about game four? Game four, so this is probably the one I feel most confident in. You know, this section, I've been able to see the Jasper Wildcats. I've seen Memorial, Bossy, uh, Harrison, Central, and Wrights. Everybody but Boonville I've seen in person live. So Jasper, I think I had tweeted this out a couple of weeks ago, but really probably the best case scenario for the Wildcats they're probably looking at Evansville Memorial, who did beat Bossy during the regular season. Now, Jasper beat both of those two teams. Wright's on the other side, who I'm sure we'll get to. Uh, but Memorial likely at Bossy Field is where that game's going to end up for next week. Now, they do have a new quarterback that's been coming in. You know, he's the kind of quarterback you're looking for. It's a sophomore. Earlier in the year, it was Caleb Elsperman, a senior quarterback. But after one game, they made the switch. Elsperman now a wide receiver. So a changing dynamic there. With the Jasper Wildcats, it's been a season of change. You're looking at Grant Young, got injured really during that game against Memorial on a two-point conversion. Evansville Harrison the next week, he got injured again. They had to bring in a number of different quarterbacks trying to figure out how to get that to work. Had the game, and it had eventually slipped away. Touchdowns of 80 and 40 yards there. Uh, So the Wildcats, I feel pretty confident. The team is firing on all cylinders, even with freshman quarterback Max Butel. They've won four straight, an extra week to get them healthy, and I think they're in a pretty good position to move themselves on to the sectional championship. Just one game for them to get there this year. In, in your career as a broadcaster, have you seen uh, three scoop and scores in one season? I don't believe so. I don't think so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been unbelievably crazy, but uh... – but uh, I think Jasper's got that solved, and I think that, that it, yeah, it'll go a long way. It seems like they're heading in the right direction right now. And like I mentioned, you know, another extra week. One, you don't have to play. But two, people getting healthy, coming back. Braylon Bear, I'm not sure if he's back to 100%. He's factored in more of the slot, wing back role. But there for a while, he was out, got his knee twisted up. Uh, Caden Ernie was one of their slot guys starting for the season. 
he had an injury in week number two against Harrison, which is kind of where their injury blow up happened. So they've had to bring in some bodies, Ross Dawkins, Elliot Smith. Now, once everybody's back, you've got a really deep ball club to make your postseason move. Now, you, the, Jasper's got a bye this week. Uh, do you have a bye? <laughs> you know what? I was going to. Um, I've, I've gotten a call to go up to Monrovia and cover some regional championship volleyball. So okay. I will be up there for this weekend. And, and, and next weekend, not ne- this week, but next week you'll have the Jasper versus Ma- Memorial Bossy winner. And uh, yes, that'll will. be live on Wits like it is every week. And um, yes. what time is that broadcast? Do you know yet? Uh, pre-game 7.05 Eastern time with Terry Gilbert and myself. Kickoff is always at 7.30. Okay. And thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And you've been listening to the Southwest Indiana Sports Network.